Hi guys and welcome to my new video series 2x Speed where I take a look at the new and upcoming games and industry news. Of course my opinion doesn't really matter but nevertheless I hope you enjoy. First off the rank is a new independent title built in Unity called Void Bastards and to be upfront I had this game wishlisted after I discovered it a few weeks ago but just recently won a copy of it in a competition. Uh, so yes this is a free copy but no it wasn't handed out in lieu of review. Void Bastards is a first person shooter roguelike that shares elements with titles like Faster Than Light and that VR game that was also like Faster Than Light but in VR. But the biggest focus of difference with Void Bastards is the art aesthetic, done in a comic book style, and I really mean a comic book style. You play as a series of future convicts who have been slagged into a powder ready to be reconstituted to serve the purposes given to you by some futuristic authority. The premise of which is an amazing mashup of the old tabletop paranoia game and the heavy metal comics from Days Gone. Topped off with voice acting and narration voiced by some top collar Brits, the overall aesthetic of the game screams worthy of a AAA title, which is amazing, as listed in the press kit the developer Blue Manchu have only a small team headed up by Australians. Hooray national pride! Nevertheless, Void Bastards is a delightfully challenging single player game that has exceeded my expectations. Now to break down why. First I want to look at the gameplay. As I said, it plays out along the similar vein of games like Faster Than Light, where you hop from star system to star system, or in this case, derelict ships, managing your fuel and rations to keep yourself flying looting, or the in-game law, reclaiming, various items to help you get further along and, well, avoid dying. It's a simple premise, but the choke of inventory management, that is ensuring that you have enough to succeed, makes you really have to plan out your tactics with each ship boarding. Take it too slow and you risk losing out on oxygen. Move too swiftly and you'll find yourself having to burn through ammunition to defeat the oncoming hordes. But that being said, the game lets you really strategize to best fit your playstyle. Tactical info like the amount of specific enemies detected or the status of security systems helps you pick when to run and when to rest. And the ability to sneak past enemies rather than confront them head on gives you way more options. I've only played a few hours of the game so far and I feel like there are even more options to unlock as I progress further. To that note, the progression works not only by hopping from one ship to another, but along the way you scavenge components to craft various upgrades and new equipment to help you along your journey. So far, the play-to-craft ratio has been really well balanced. New levels effectively give me new gear, but without oversaturating it. Now, as if that wasn't already enough to make the game complete, they have a bunch of other features that I consider to be attention to detail that blew my mind. First off the bat, the character I generated came with a special perk. These perks can either be positive or negative to the survival of the character. Mine was a smoker. This translated to the character having a cough at random intervals, the result of which would be to alert nearby enemies of his presence. Considering the first level pits you in the vicinity of a very hard to beat enemy, things didn't go down too well and I had to run around and use the bulkheads to evade death, which is another cool feature. Using the ship's facilities you can trap enemies and protect yourself. Locking doorways or popping the airlock hatches and flushing enemies into space for one. You can also override the security systems for your benefit, provided you have enough of the in-game currency to pay for the service. I could go on more about the gameplay especially as I see more of it, but now I want to move on to the aesthetics. The art stylings of this game are truly amazing. It was the videos that got this title onto my wish list, but nothing had prepared me for when I first stepped into the game. Cartoon shading has been done in games before, most notably would be the more recent series Borderlands, but the majority of them focus on maintaining the 3D style with cell shading. But Void Bastards does comic style more authentically. When you play the game, you actually feel as though you were looking at a comic book panel. The way the depth plays with your vision and how objects in the world fit against the background, it's truly masterful. But it doesn't stop there. The developers have gone to lengths to really push the idea that you're in a comic book. Sound has a visual element that serves not only as a sweet visual aesthetic, but an important feature for situational awareness. Vocals and footsteps from enemy characters will appear on screen as text, coming through closed or open doorways, indicating the direction of the sound's origin. The effect looks amazing, and has certainly helped me avoid certain confrontations. The dialogue and narration, too, adds to the zany future depiction. The gags are enjoyable and not overly dry or cheap shots and just the right kind of cartoony that to me really plays on the nostalgia of the old 80s space cartoons that, to be fair, I was probably too young to have watched when I did. Getting a little bit more technical, controls wise the game is simplistic, but it's not a Call of Duty first person game, it is more of a locked movement arc, uh, but it serves the game well. You still move fluidly when you need it, without having to delve into super tactical gunplay like Rainbow Six Siege or the likes. The weaponry is also good, giving you the basics you need to get through but allowing you to advance to better your odds of survival, but also providing challenges with traps inside the derelicts, like oil slicks that affect your movement, and other things that I won't spoil the surprise of. As yet, I haven't suffered any issues with frame rate. Everything has run smoothly while still looking as sharp as it needs to be, but considering the art aesthetic, I doubt that that will become an issue for any level gaming PC. So overall, I rate this game highly, but like I said, I got this game for free thanks to a lucky competition. But why didn't I buy it outright? Well, when I found the game it was roughly $40 Australian, which to be fair is quite a reasonable price for a new title. 
PUBG, for example, is around this price, and most AAA titles well exceed it. But $40 is a lot to put away for an unknown single player game. And yes, the game is single player, but it definitely needs to be. It's meant to be casual fun, much like Faster Than Light was, and adding in the element of having to wait for your friend to ready up would sap a lot of what makes this game enjoyable. But now that I've played the game, would I have been happy to pay for it? The answer is yes. The amount of master craftsmanship this game has definitely makes it worthy of the price. And if you like games like Faster Than Light and roguelike FPS action, then you should enjoy this game. Also to that, if you like the cartoon style, I find this to be one of the best iterations of comic book art into game on the market. So thanks again for watching. Let me know in the comments section what you did and didn't like about the video and what you'd like to see going forward. Client expired.